Hi everybody, it's Tom Gregory here, and today we're going to be talking about the evaluation order of a multi-project build in Gradle and how to set things up to really work the way you want them to. And when you've got a multi-project build in Gradle, then if it's a fairly simple use case, then everything's easy to understand and works as you expect. But as soon as you start to use some of the more advanced features of Gradle, then you really need to go under the covers to understand what's going on and how your projects interact with each other within Gradle's lifecycle. So today we're going to be looking at a few code examples. I'm going to be drinking a non-alcoholic beer. So come join the party. Okay, I'm going to start this off with a quick recap of how multi-project builds work in Gradle. And to illustrate this, I'm going to create an example, but you can also find the example over on GitHub, and the link is in the description below. So I've got IntelliJ Idea open here, and I'm just going to create a new project, and it's going to be a Gradle project, basic version. I'm going to put it in com.tom, and I'm going to call it Gradle eval order. Just choose the default options. And now I've got a Gradle project with the Gradle wrapper and the build.gradle. And to show you how easy it is to create a multi-module project, I'm just going to open up settings.gradle. And all I need to do is in here say include and then whatever sub-projects I want. Sub-project 1, sub-project 2. And now if I run Gradle W projects, Gradle's already picked up the fact that I've got these two sub-projects. So there's no need to create a separate directory or create a separate build.gradle. Uh, all you need to do is, is add the include. Of course, if you want to add more functionality, then there's different ways to do that. And the first way I'm going to show you is to add functionality to a sub-project from the parent project. So here I've got the parent build.gradle and I'm going to add in here a reference to all projects. This is a way to apply some configuration to every project in the Gradle build. Here I'm going to add a task called hello and that task is going to print the name of the current project. So every project in this build is going to get a task called hello that's going to print the name of that project. And now if I run Gradle W hello, you can see that for every project, the parent project and the two sub-projects, it's printed out I'm project name. So that's one way of adding functionality to sub-projects. Of course, the other way is to create a directory. So let's say subproject one, and then within there, create a build.gradle. And then in here, I could, for example, add a task goodbye, which says goodbye from project name. Now, if I run hello, goodbye, of course, I get the same output as before, but I also get a goodbye from subproject one. So these are the two main ways to add functionality to subprojects. And the first option is great if you've got functionality that is shared and is the same between subprojects. And the second way of adding functionality to a subproject's build.gradle is great if you've got special customized behavior that you need to happen. So now it's time to really lift up the covers and see what's happening with our multi-project builds. But firstly, as a quick reminder, we're going to quickly run through the different phases of the Gradle lifecycle. And we've got an initialization phase, which is where Gradle figures out which projects are going to take part in the build. And this is determined by the include statement we just saw. And then there's a configuration phase where Gradle executes the code in the build files and it basically creates everything that's required 
in order to run tasks in the next stage, the third stage, which is the execution phase, where Gradle determines which tasks should be executed and in which order. And this is based on what tasks are passed in on the command line. And to illustrate this, we're going to put in a few println statements. And the first one is going to go in settings.gradle. And I'm going to say println initialization phase. And then I'm going to add one in the subproject one build.gradle, println project.name configuration phase. And then I'm going to copy the same string and pop it down here in the parent project build.gradle in the all projects definition here. And now I'm going to run again Gradle W, Gradle W, hello. So what do we see here? So as I said before, the first phase is the initialization phase, and we see this getting printed out during the part where it's parsing the settings.gradle, which is where it figures out what projects to run. And then we've got the configuration phase, and we're getting a configuration of the parent build.gradle. That's these three lines here. And then the configuration of the subproject one build.gradle, which is this line here. And then we've got the execution phase, which is actually executing the hello task in the parent and also in the subprojects. And there's a couple of important things to note here that I want to point out that maybe aren't immediately obvious. And the first one is that in terms of the configuration phase, the parent's build.gradle is getting configured before the subprojects build.gradle. And the second thing is that even though in the parents build.gradle we have this we have this all projects block that configures tasks for subprojects, so it's configuring tasks for subprojects that gets executed before the subprojects build.gradle gets executed. <laughs> So now that we've got a better idea of how projects get evaluated in a multi-project Gradle build, what exactly can we do about it? And you know, to, to illustrate this, I'm going to use an example, and I've got a plugin that I've in the same project, I've created this plugin and it's in build source. And don't worry too much if you don't know much about Gradle plugins, but it's effectively a way for me to uh, execute some code when I apply this plugin. And this particular plugin, it is essentially going to print out how are you. So it's called Smalltalk plugin, and the Smalltalk is going to print out is how are you. And the task that uh, this plugin exposes is dynamic in that it's a task prefixed with make Smalltalk2, and then it takes in a configuration. Uh, from this Smalltalk extension, which is recipient. So the way I would configure this would be in my build.gradle, I would want to import Smalltalk plugin and then apply, apply Smalltalk plugin. And the configuration looks like this with a recipient that I can configure. And in this case, I'm going to set that to Tom. So what happens here is when I configure this recipient, the plan is that that's going to get uh, applied to this extension here, this recipient extension, and I can use that within the plugin to dynamically generate a task with this task name, which I'm hoping in this case will be make small talk to Tom. So given that, we're going to try running that task and see what happens and take a guess what's going to happen in this scenario. So when I run make small talk to Tom, ah, we get an error. So in this case, we've got an error saying task make small talk to Tom not found in root project grade or eval order, which is interesting. And maybe let's have a look to see what tasks we actually have by running gradle w tasks dash dash all 
and we've actually got a task make small talk to null. So for some reason here, the recipient property hasn't been applied to this extension at the point where we're reading it during this plugin application. And the reason for this, when you think about it, is well, it's kind of obvious that at this point we're applying the plugin. So at this point it's executing this code and it's trying to get the recipient from the extension. But that hasn't been configured at this point because that doesn't get configured until after the plugin is applied. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation, but thankfully the clever folks over at Gradle HQ uh, have come up with a fix for this, which is a way to wait until the end of the configuration phase of a project to execute some code. And the way we do this is to wrap it in a project.afterevaluate method, which takes a closure And FYI, a closure is just a way of passing some executable code or a function to a method. And in this case, we're saying after you evaluate the project or after you've applied or configured the project, then we want to execute this additional code at the end. And hopefully by that point, the recipient configuration will already be, have been configured. So let's try running the same thing again make small talk to Tom and bingo now we've got the output how are you I'm gonna have a drink so we saw earlier that during the configuration phase of the Gradle build lifecycle Gradle evaluates the parent before the sub projects and Gradle calls this breadthwise ordering, or you can think of it as maybe breadth first ordering. And this is good for most basic scenarios, but what if we wanted our sub project to be configured first? So to illustrate this, I'm going to use an example. And once again, because I'm such a nice guy, this example is available over on GitHub, link in the description, I'm going to save your fingers for you. And we're going to just create a, a new Gradle project. And I'm going to call this, let's call it depth first. And once again, just like the previous example in the settings.gradle, I want to include subproject1 and subproject2. And both of these will have their own build.gradle. So we'll have a subproject1 directory with build.gradle and the build.gradle for this is a task do thing one which prints out doing thing one in project.name and likewise let's have subproject two task do thing two which prints out doing thing two in project.name so nothing particularly special there and if I run Gradle W do thing one do thing two, you can see it's printing out those two statements. No surprises there really. But what if we had a new requirement which was that the do thing two task needs to run before do thing one? Well one way to fix this up would be to, to add an ordering in the parent build.gradle and we could do this by getting a reference to subproject1 using the project method and same again for subproject2 and then we can say subproject1 dot tasks so this is a way to get a reference to a task do thing1 and then we can say dot must run after sub project two dot tasks do thing two and just in case you're not familiar with must run after it implies an ordering but not a dependency so it will only run do thing one after do thing two if it, if gradle determines that both of these tasks should run we're just saying what order they should be in so now if we run the same command do thing one do thing two down here we've got a big fat error 
which says task with name do thing one not found in project sub project one. Hmm, interesting. So Gradle's found both of these sub projects, but it thinks that task do thing one doesn't exist. Well, given the fact that Gradle has a breadth first ordering, just need a quick drink here. This is no surprise because Gradle is evaluating the parent projects build.gradle and then the sub project. So at this point here, it doesn't know anything about these tasks. So what can we do in this situation? Well, thankfully again, the boffins over at Gradle HQ have provided us with a handy function called evaluation depends on children. So we can just pop this in here, evaluation depends on children. And what this is going to do is force Gradle to first off configure the sub-projects before the parent projects. And let's see what happens in this case. Bingo! We've got doing thing 2 printing out before doing thing 1. And this has happened because Gradle is evaluating the sub-projects build.gradles first, which means that when it comes to the parent projects build.gradles, it has the tasks available that it needs to set up the ordering. So there's a lot to take in here, but let's summarize this as three key takeaways to remember. And the first one is to always keep in mind the Gradle lifecycle build phases of initialization, configuration, and execution. And when something's not going quite as you expect, think about what phase of the lifecycle you're in, and it's going to help you to understand what's going on. Secondly, use After Evaluate to delay execution until the end of the current project's configuration phase. And this can be handy in several situations, such as waiting for plugin properties to be configured, like we saw earlier. And thirdly, remember that Gradle project evaluation during the configuration phase is breadthwise ordering of parent project first. So it's worth bearing in mind that during the configuration phase, the parent project by default will be evaluated before any sub-projects. And you can switch the ordering of this using the evaluation depends on children method that we saw earlier. So why not try applying these concepts to your own project? And hopefully this video is going to help you to better understand what's going on under the covers in Gradle in a multi-project build. So thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and I'll see you in the next episode of Tom Gregory Tech.